Starting with IoT projects can be difficult, not because the knowledge needed to begin, but rather due to the amount of possible solutions to solve our specific problem, or the amount of information that is online. There are multiple communications, workflows, platforms, or applications that we can use to achieve our goal, which makes it very difficult to select the best one. Or just one. So the best is to start simple and clear. In this first video of IoT project series, I'm going to show you how to use the well-known ESP32 microcontroller to post data online in a MySQL database to after check it online wherever you are. Using basic tools, Arduino ID, PHP and HTML, and providing the necessary code that will allow you to implement your own solutions afterwards. The ESP32 is a low-cost, low-power microcontroller with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That is to say, we are going to use it as a microcontroller board that will allow us to connect to a Wi-Fi signal to after perform tasks over internet. In this application, we will use a 7 euros chip board to send data from a small digital sensor board that combines the AHT20 humidity and temperature sensor and the BMP280 pressure and temperature sensor over internet. With this, we will be able to monitor the data of our house or our garden or anywhere where we have an internet signal available. All links to the hardware as well as the code used will be available in the description. Let's start with hardware connections. In this small circuit, we only have two components and therefore the connections are quite simple. They are so easy that we could use a brake valve for mounting them. Basically, we just need to make a E2C connection between the microcontroller and the sensor. Both digital sensors are in a single board, but they will have different addresses to work with them. Main problem is usually the identification of pins on the microcontroller. For the ESP32, the 21 is the default SDA connection pin and the 22 the SCL. Ground, as always, is easy to identify, and power pin will go to the 3 volt pins on the microcontroller. Pull up resistors are already soldered in the sensor board, so we don't need to worry about them. Additionally, you can set almost any pin of the microcontroller to have E2C capabilities. So, super easy and simple, let's solder this. Despite the hardware mounting was easy, in this project coding is going to be the one with more steps, as we need to program both the hardware and the server side. Let's start preparing the Arduino sketch. First, if we haven't done, we need to install the board and required libraries in the Arduino ID. To install the ESP32 board, we need to insert the URL address for downloading the board in Arduino ID preferences. And after, navigate to Board Manager in the Arduino ID and find and install the ESP32 by Expressive System Boards. This will download the necessary board info together with some useful examples that we can check for ideas. Regarding sensors, Fortunately, Adafruit has already leveraged for both sensors. Thus, we just need to add in preferences Adafruit URL to download those sensors libraries. Then, we can navigate to Tools, Manage Libraries, and install Adafruit BME280 library, Adafruit AHTX0 library, and Adafruit Unified Sensors library. Once we do this, I recommend to close and open Arduino ID to start with our sketch. 
The hard work is done by the library's installed and we will just need to write some lines to get data from sensors and to send data to our online database. The code starts with the library definitions. There we define libraries that are necessary to connect to the Wi-Fi, to post via HTTP queries the data from the sensors and other free libraries to use the sensors. After, we define all the variables that we will need in the code, the sensor name that will allow to identify data from multiple sensors online, the sleep time that will determine the time between data posts in the sample, and after, the variables associated to the Wi-Fi communication and sensor data. In the setup, we will first connect to our Wi-Fi signal. For that, we will need to define our Wi-Fi network name and the password. After, we will initiate the serial for debugging and to follow the different steps of the code. Finally, we initiate all the sensors. In the loop, we will begin asking the values of the different sensors. First, the humidity and the temperature sensor, and after, the barometric pressure sensor. All this based on the examples associated to the sensor libraries from Adafruit. After, we will define in a string the URL that is going to act as a post call to transmit the data. It will depend on our website address and it will point to a PHP file that will be in charge of posting the data. For security reasons, we will add a constant key, then a name that will be different for each microcontroller to allow the installation of multiple clones, and after the values from our sensors, T for temperature, H for humidity, and P for pressure. For posting the data, we will need to access to the defined URL. For that, we will check if the Wi-Fi connection is activated and, if possible, we will access to the URL. Then, to detect errors, but not mandatory, we can see what the URL returns and plot it into the area. And we will finish closing the HTTP connection. In the end of the loop, we will need to add a delay according to the sleep time defined, that will manage the frequency of the loop and therefore the sampling time of our sensors. A better approach to manage the sampling rates will be to define a deep sleep cycle that periodically wakes up the microcontroller in a defined period. For this, you can check the deep sleep tutorial in the ESP32 examples. Or even better, you can use the auto-powering circuit that we have already covered in this channel. Let's upload the code to the circuit and check its performance. The code upload may take some time and we may need to push the boot button in the bar when the ID starts uploading the code to it. But after, we can see how the HTTP connection is successful and how the PHP page returns done after posting the data. Now we will continue with the server coding. For this, we will use our space free hosting option. We could use many other alternatives, but most of them work similarly. The free hosting option allows us to define freely a subdomain for testing as well as to define one database. Our subdomain will be the same one defined in the microcontroller. As you see, we have many subdomain alternatives. After we define the subdomain, we will be able to upload the necessary files to make it work. But first, let's define MySQL database. We will need to define a database name which will be also the username for connections and a password. After those details together with the hostname and port will be needed to access to the database. Next, using PHP Miami, we will be able to define the table that will save our sensor data. It will contain five columns, one storing the date, DT of date time type and with a default value, this will automatically save the upload timestamp, a name of bar chart type with a maximum of 10 characters and the sensor data T, H and P of float type. Now we just need to allow the PHP files that will control the data posting and the HTML file that will show the sensor values. But let's dive first in the structure of these files. The name of the files are self-explanatory. We have a DB connection PHP file that manages the connections to the database and will be used by the rest of the files. 
the insert data PHP file that will handle the insertion of data to the database and the index HTML file that will show in the web the data in a table. By using the index keyword in the HTML file, the hosting will automatically open this file when accessing to the web URL via a browser. The DB Connection PHP file contains two functions. One for opening the database connection where we will need the information of the database, host name, database name, password, user, and port, and the other to close the connection. We will call these two PHP functions from the other files. Insert data PHP file will be the one posting the data to the database. First, it opens the connections to the database and gets all the sensor information from the URL, the key, the name of the sensor, the temperature, the humidity, and the pressure. After, it checks if the key is the correct one and inserts the data using a SQL query to the data table defined in the database. Remember that the date time was configured as an automatic value when the data insertion was performed. The PHP file will return a done if the insertion is successful. The file finishes with closing the connection. The index HTML file is basically a HTML file that will create a table with information storage in the database. It starts with a PHP script that opens a database connection and asks to the database for the last 500 lines ordered by time, and it saves the result in the RS variable. In the HTML part, we first define a simple style for the table. We define a title for the page, and we proceed with the table definition, showing in the first line a header with the variable names, and after, recursively, by means of a PHP function, we display its rows, decomposing first the data variable into rows, and after, its row into cells. As you see, the echo function allows us to print dynamically HTML code. Now, if we upload the free files into our free subdomain, the sensor will start uploading data automatically into our database, and this will be displayed into the subdomain index page. As you see, everything works. This small project can be used, for example, to monitor the temperature in different parts of your house or garden, maybe adding more advanced JavaScript graphics in the index file, or even adding a login page to manage the accessibility of this information. To make the most of our hardware, you could include an auto power circuit to power the microcontroller with a battery periodically. You can check the video in our channel, or even add an electronic ink screen to be able to see the data on site. The electronic ink screen is the perfect combination for EOT sensors that switch on and off periodically, as they are able to save the last monitored data without power. If you are interested in such projects, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment on the topic that you would like us to cover. Hope you like it and see you in the next one.